Let's go. So this is it's a real simple technique. You spray. Somebody filming this? Can y'all see this? You spray into the into the scales. Don't don't be afraid of you know covering the piece because that's exactly what it is, what you're after. <laughs> sure. Yeah, if I can figure out where to zoom is. I'm sorry. That's better with the light. Uh, fine with me. So what I'm using here mm. is a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. It's my uh, cleaner of choice, if you will, because it cuts through pretty much any acrylic paint. Uh, I also use it to do this technique. Now, as I'm doing this, you can see how, there you go, now you have the dark color in the cracks and you now have the scales exposed. And I'm done. Right? How, how, how easy was that? Right? So, so now, and you can, you can go back over it again if you, if you don't think that the uh, uh, crack color is different or dark enough. You can go back over it, do it again, do it again, do it again. Now, a little word of caution. These, these two busts are primered in Krylon Almond, which is a satin enamel. Doesn't get bothered by alcohol. If you, your color of choice happens to be an acrylic, Make sure you seal it really well, at least two or three coats of uh, either satin or a gloss, uh, because the alcohol will completely eat the, <laughs> the undercoat uh, if it's an acrylic based. By sealing it, you get the same toughness <laughs> as you would with, uh, with the enamel, and then you can do the, you can do the same procedure um, without any fear of, of removing the base coat. So I'm gonna keep going. And again, you can do this with a lighter color. You can do this with any color. Uh, this just happens to be a brown. And uh, I didn't put it up in there. So once you, once you get the color where you like it to be, where you want it to be, you can use the same piece of uh, cloth that you had before. I use a lint-free shop towel. I've used Q-tips, brushes. Uh, you can pretty much use anything you want with this. So you can see how as, we're, as we keep doing this, I keep the color just kind of settles itself down into the, into the scales, leaving the, t the highest parts, which is what you want, exposed. Can you all see that? Everybody see that? You see that? Yes. Okay, cool. So the other thing that you can do, let's say you want a lighter color in in between the scales, I'll show you what I would do on the uh, on the head. Pull the needle guard off. So I would and this requires a little bit of control. Right? So it's not for the faint of heart and it's not for anyone who hasn't, you know, kind of mastered airbrush control. Uh, kind of go in there and start modeling or kind of just moving the airbrush around on the scales. Kind of in the center. You can get really crazy on the bigger scales when you start to model the, the color on. That compressor is really annoying. Can you guys can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Oh <laughs> oh picky. Well it's a nice looking hand, don't get us wrong. <laughs> now can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So and that's that's I learn quick. So not not too difficult, but again requires a little bit of control. 
can't have too shaky a hand. After last last night's debauchery, I'm surprised I can do this. There you go. Right. So so now you've got the uh, the darker section of the scales. And you can go all the way up to the edge, right? And and uh, and keep going with this pattern all the way down. It doesn't take very long. You see, that took me just a few a few seconds to do. So it, it doesn't. It's not uh, too difficult to do. For the back scales right up in here, what I would do is I would go in toward the bottom. <laughs> from the back half and start shading and detailing. As you go. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? So I always kind of start at the where they overlap, because that's where the natural shadow would be. And just kind of bring it down the scale. Now you can you can completely cover the scale if you want, all the way down to the bottom. To change the change up the look. Or you can do the dark scales and go back in with another color and do the center, do what I was doing up at the top. Now this works pretty well, especially if your intent is to go back over it with another color, which I'm gonna show you. Say what? Something, yeah, something, the technique is the same. You can do that, you can do this with anything. Uh, Tony was saying that the last, last class that I taught here uh, we did the Monster Squad Gilman from uh, uh, Blackheart. And I used the same technique on, on that to bring out the scale detail. And then just went back in and started detailing every, every part of that with the airbrush. Spent four hours. Yeah, this takes 30 seconds. The rest of the detail takes a long time. So, nothing new under the sun there. You get that. Uh, you can detail this however much you want. You can stop. You can break it up a little bit. You can just spread out which scales get color, which don't. Mike, on your camera, mm -hmm. you could do the overlapping scales just like this, right? So then now you're, you're bringing the, the shadow and the detail out from the back. And now you, once you're putting on the new color, or the transparent color over the top really pops. And I'm going to show this right now. Clean this out here. So after you have uh, have done all this, the next step is to figure out, okay, well, what, what color is this dragon going to be? All right, now I've got the detail in there. Now, now what? So what I, like to, what I like to do is take transparency. And I, I work primarily in transparency. Uh, because I, I like the fact that I can change the color on the fly if I want to. So if I'm using a, a yellow base like the, this transparent mallard tan, uh, I don't know why they call it mallard tan, it's an orange. Uh, if I want to change and shift the color to more of a blue or a green, uh, I can take a blue color, and I'll show this here in a little bit, and mist it over the top, and it creates an instant color shift because the blue and the yellow mix, right? Now you get blue. So with this color, what I like about it is it starts out subtle, but it'll build black. If, if you really keep going with it, uh, it'll turn to a really dark orange brown and then eventually uh, go to black. So once you get this kind of, of detail going, you go back in and just kind of mist over everything. Especially down toward the back end of the scales. So you can you can completely cover and now you've, you've changed the, uh, the complete color of the dragon. Now you can go in with especially with this transparent color where the dark is and start building in the color you're using so that it's not just a brown shade. Now it is the color of the dragon that you've chosen. Right, so now your, your detail 
and your shading now becomes the color of the dragon. Right? Not too, not too tough. Uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse makes it. This was Lifetone, but uh, Jesse, Jesse makes it. So you can keep going with this uh, all the way down. You could do the entire dragon that way. You can uh, fade it, uh, just like just like this. You could keep the lower part, uh, the brighter color, and and just fade the fade the orange from the top down. You know, there are many ways. I mean, hundreds of ways that you could paint a dragon. Just pick a color and lock it go. Well, hello there. Somebody went out the exit. I didn't do it. Anybody have any questions so far? Kind of simple, huh? With something like that yellow hot, how do you blend into the bottom a little bit better so it's not so small? You can, you can keep going, right? And that'll, that'll, as it covers the brown, it kind of changes, you can see right here, it changes the shade. You keep going, if you want to go darker up underneath the scales, it'll blend down into the brown a little better. Uh, it's really just a matter of just keep playing with it until you're happy with the way it looks. Right? So, <laughs> that's comical. I bet you that was Tom Benaldi. Probably. So what I'm going to do now is, is show you what I meant by changing the change, uh, doing a color shift on the dragon. You can see where it's kind of a orangey color. If you used a a blue like this, you can go in and it turns into a really pretty cool almost a blue brown. Right when the two when the two hit each other, can y'all see that? Sure you do. <laughs> so and you can also take this past. I mean, you can you can take that blue color on down into the into the lighter shade if you wanted to. Uh, go back into the shadows and, and kind of mix that color on the piece, right? And because you're using transparency, you can do that. Right? It's not you don't have to. Oh, okay, well now I gotta I gotta mix a new color and I gotta no. You're you're actually mixing colors on the piece, and this is <laughs> this is why I love transparency. Um, I rarely rarely ever use an opaque uh, unless I'm painting something that's supposed to be really hard. Uh, something like this. You will never see me use uh, opaques on this piece. Now, where I will do that uh, is with white, um, and I didn't bring any white. Um, but what I'll do, and, I'll, and I'll, it'll it'll be a little more evident on this piece. But say I want to add the color that that I, I want. I want to add a different color that's really going to be completely different than what is currently on the dragon. I'll take white. And I will highlight that area that I want to be a different color, or do a uh, to, to shift the color, and then I'll use a lighter version. Say for this, if I wanted to brighten up the scales right here by the neck, I would take a little bit of white, really thin, and, and I like to use what I call uh, over-reduced colors. And by over-reduced, it just means you thinned it more, right? So you got to be a little more careful with it because it'll puddle up on you. It'll spider. Uh, you might want to turn your air pressure down a bit. Because it damn sure will spider on you if you're not careful. Right? It just blow everywhere, and uh, not too hard to fix. Really hard to fix if you haven't sealed your kit. Because you, if you didn't, or you did seal it, you can wipe it off. If you didn't seal it, you might wipe off everything else that you did. Right? So, which is bad. So, I'll use that white to go in and, and highlight those particular scales that I want to be a brighter color. Then I'll go back in with a lighter version of this color, which it's more of a, a kind of a yellowy orange. Uh, it's a color that I mix. Uh, it's used uh, golden, it's Comart, transparent bright yellow, and a little bit of this color, of this Mallard tan. And uh, by using the, that same color, you get, uh, it's a little technique, it's called color location. And it doesn't, it blends better. Right, because you used a little bit of the color 
that you had on the piece, it blends a lot better, not so stark. Right, it's not such a, oh my God, that's a, that's, a, that's a huge color shift right there. It really blends quite a bit better. And you can see, I mean, just in the, in the couple of minutes, I can keep going on this and it'll look great. Right? It'll, look, it'll look pretty cool. Um, come down to painting the eyes and the, and the rest of the horns, that's actually pretty simple. What I like to do is um, on the horns, I will paint them a bone color. Uh, any pick your bone color doesn't really matter. Uh, I will then either use the airbrush or watercolors and detail the horns the way I want them to look. Then what I'll do is I'll go in with a transparent and start to blend in. Here, let me show you. Let's see if I can show you this with this color. <coughs> so with the brown, I'll start at the base of the horn, or sometimes I'll start at the back. Sometimes I want the base of the horn to be the darker part fading up into the lighter part of the horn at the tip. Other times I'll take the tip and blend backwards, right? The tip will be dark and then the base of the horn will be lighter. It really depends on my preference for the dragon. So for this, I'll start at the base of the dragon. And as I'm doing this, you'll see that there's very little to no overspray on this part, right? So I'm, I'm at low PSI, I'm at about 20 PSI. Um, again, expose the needle so you get a really fine spray and you just kind of move it very gently back and forth. Right. And it takes a while using the transparents to kind of build up the color you want. But it's really the only way that I know of to get the, uh, to get that completely natural look, right, that a, that a bone or a, a horn would have. Then I would stand back and just kind of missed it a bit. Now, if you're worried about overspray, you can take a, a 3x5 card or something, a piece of paper, and slide it in between the horn and the back so that now you can spray and not worry about getting paint on this, this scale back here on the other side of the piece. Um, and you can keep going. I mean, you can take this color and keep going. It'll build to an even darker color, as you can see it's starting to do now. Or you can take a transparent black and start building it up the same way. See? It's not too, not too tough. You can do the same, same step. If you don't want to, to detail it like that, you can just stand back and kind of mist it down till the dark part is actually the tip of the horn. I hate to mask. That's one of the things I actually hate to do. So I'll pick up a piece and I'll rotate it around so that I can, I can spray without hitting, hitting the other parts. I'm very lazy. I am so lazy, it's not even funny. I'm sorry? Oh, I love Silly Putty. Oh, I absolutely love Silly Putty. I just hate to mask. When I have to mask, that's what I use. I don't use masking tape or anything because the Silly Putty really refuses to pull up the paint underneath. Uh, masking tape, eh, not so much, you know. So you can see now I've reversed it, and it's, it's looking goofy now because now he's kind of weird. But so that now to get the lighter tip down to the darker base, or the darker base, or tip down to the lighter base. And you can keep, keep working it. Right, you can keep detailing if you want. Again, the transparent color is just going to keep building on itself that it'll turn into an opaque. Right. Takes a while, but it will turn into opaque and get really dark. Takes a long time to get that, that kind of effect and you'll be better off using an actual opaque color. But if you keep building on this, then it, it, it still allows the base color to show through. Right. Any questions? If you're picking like which scale, you're talking about like doing the white, highlight it, and kind of make it like a little bit more random, mm -hmm. it, to make it more random like nature would produce. Are you picking that from your experience, just in building all these things, or do you have like a technique to randomize it without making it look like a pattern? A lot of it is, is based on experience, and a lot of it is, I look at reference books. Yeah. Right, I'll pick, a, I'll pick a reptile reference book out and look at an iguana, or I'll look at uh, a bearded dragon, or some, some reptile that has kind of the same basic uh, scale pattern as the piece that I'm working on and I'll take a look at that and say okay so the, I, I, you can pick up the pattern based on what you're seeing 
and then you can replicate that on your piece. Right. All right so. Did you find that you ever got stuck into like doing everything? First? Oh yeah. Then it yeah. Like much of a pattern. After a while, you're like, ah, oh, crap. That looks like you know, it was I did that on purpose right. versus random. So what I'll do is I'll go back and either maybe do okay. I'm gonna add a third one right here. Uh, that's that's nothing but thinner. But you know, I'll add a third. A third scale right there, and maybe one down here, and one over here, you know, one down here. Basically, I'll just move around. Sometimes I'll put two together, one on top of the other. As you can see, now all of a sudden it looks it looks like I'm not random. Uh, it's like I meant to do that. Yeah. It's supposed to be random, so I'll go back in and kind of wipe it off. Yeah. So just you can work it you can do you know you take the, the little the little bit of alcohol right here and you can remove that piece right and just keep on going right okay. so uh what i primarily just based on experience because i painted quite a few dragons but uh, i do every now and then go back and look at reference books mm -hmm. right just just to just to make sure i'm not falling into a pattern of my own right. even though it looks random it's the same thing over and over again right and and so i would rather go and look at the book and say, okay, well, this is the way this kind of looks on this real piece, this real creature, and I'm gonna try to replicate that on, on this, right? So if like for your camera, a turtle, right? You look at the turtle shell, if that's the way you want it to look, try to replicate the colors of the turtle shell on the back. Not easy. Uh, even though it is just yellow, basically yellow and brown for the most part, it's not that simple. There's a lot of uh, variation that you can get on a shelf.